one of your thoughts of it? I thought we won the fight actually. I thought it was very close. And you know, when, when you score in a fight one round either way, you can go either way. And uh, you know, I felt like the 12th was a bit, a bit of a disappointing round for Luke because I felt like he lost that round. And that was the kind of round that I got in the ring after. I thought, uh, I think we've won, but you know, if we would have won the 12th, I would have really thought we'd won the fight. But you know, you're the challenger, you're on an away show. Um, if it's close, you generally um, expect not to get the nod. But you know, what he did prove was he's a world class lightweight. Borgo Lenara is one of the best lightweights in the world. And Luke Campbell's just mixed it with him. You know, if he, if he didn't beat him, which I think he did, it was very, very close. And therefore, you know, he's, uh, he's worthy to be challenging for these world titles. When you're that, the, that was my next question, actually. So I, I agree with you. I, I feel like he's right there yeah. as far as in the, in the top of the class. So, so what do you kind of envision next for him? Like? Well, I think, you know, to, to carve out another shot at the world title. I mean, he's devastated, but, you know, HBO like him. You know, he's very popular back home. We've got a big fight coming up in two weeks between Anthony Crawler and Ricky Burns, which, you know, he could look to fight the winner of that fight. Look at the other titleists as well to get a shot back at the world title. And he'll have a little rest now um, and, you know, look to come back in March or April. What's it like when you're the promoter of the fighter who loses a championship fight like that? What do you feel is your duty following a fight like that, going to the guys' dressing room? What's that um, like? Just to talk to them, really. You know what I mean? Most people don't really want to talk, talk to anybody. They just want to go and cry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's had a cry. And, you know, you just, just reassure them that you don't lie to them. You don't have to lie in this case. You just say, you've done yourself proud. You know, in the second round, you look like the fight was going to be over in the third round. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, you win, in my opinion, he won four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, everything from Lenares was hitting him on the gloves. He completely controlled the tempo of the fight. He hurt him to the body on numerous occasions. It was only the 11th and 12th that sort of gave Lenares a, a shot back in the fight, in my opinion. So you tell him that, he feels like he won the fight. He was in there. I mean, he, he said, other than the second round, I felt totally in control of the fight. Um, he just say the truth. Your stock's gone up. You'll come again. You get another shot, you have a nice rest. You know, he wasn't hurt in a fight, he got a cut under his eye. It wasn't a heavy duty fight, it was a, it was a intelligent fight, it was a, you know, a technical fighter's fight. So, I think he's got a great future. You know, the big box. Eddie, with uh, Unitas uh, winning tonight, how do you see a fight between him and Mikey J? Uh, Mikey Garcia. Garcia. Well, I think Mikey Garcia is sort of about fighting Cotto, isn't he? 154 pounds. So <laughs> I don't think you'll see Garcia back at 135 pounds. I don't. You know, I'd love to see Garcia Linares. Great fight. But uh, you know, my, my gut feeling is that I think Mikey Garcia's days at 135 pounds are done. Thank you, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Bye.